Welcome to the rugged world of The High Chaparral, a 1967 TV series that takes you on a wild ride through the untamed landscapes of the Old West. No fancy talk here, just good all storytelling that keeps you on the edge of your seat. Now, there's more to this show than meets the eye. Did you know there are funny, shocking, and downright sad facts waiting to be uncovered? Stick around and you won't be disappointed. Quick question for you, do you have a cherished memory linked to this TV series? Maybe a moment that still brings a smile to your face or a tear to your eye. Share it with us in the comments below, we'd love to hear your stories. And speaking of stories, with so many characters in the High Chaparral, which one became your favorite? The personalities in this show are as diverse as the desert landscape, and everyone has their standout moments. But hey, don't take our word for it, experience it yourself. Keep watching for more surprises, and remember to drop your most cherished memory or personal experience in the comments. Your stories make this journey even more memorable. So, are you ready for the adventure? Buckle up and get ready for a ride through the Old West like no other. The High Chaparral, a Western series by David Dortort, a producer of the well-known Bonanza, is a rarely seen but memorable addition to the genre. The story revolves around two families brought together through a marriage of convenience, the Cannons and the Montoyas. Leif Erikson plays the role of John Cannon, the patriarch who lost his wife during their westward journey. Linda Crystal portrays Victoria, the headstrong daughter of Don Sebastian de Montoya, played by Frank Sovra. Additionally, Henry Darrow embodies the equally assertive son, Manolito. Rodolfo Acosto and Don Collier round out the cast, contributing to the series' engaging storytelling. What sets this show apart from other Western dramas of its time is its robust portrayals of Native Americans and non-condescending depictions of life among Mexican neighbors. The series unfolds against the backdrop of the vast American Southwest, presenting compelling stories filled with character studies and typical Western situations. A notable casting choice in the series is Frank Silvera, a black actor in the role of Don Sebastian. Silvera's ability to portray various ethnicities showcases his talent and chameleon-like appearance. Equally noteworthy is the casting of Crystal, Darrow, and Acosto, all Hispanic actors contributing to the series' diversity. This show successfully weaves together narratives that connect with the audience. Its exploration of life in the American Southwest, combined with strong character portrayals and a diverse cast, makes it a distinctive entry in the Western genre. Let's explore some interesting connections and behind-the-scenes details related to the High Chaparral. When this Old West drama began in 1967, it brought a touch of Hollywood history. The assistant director for certain episodes happened to be the son of the famous director Erich von Stroheim, adding a layer of Hollywood heritage to the series. Going back in time, think about Roberto Contreras and Frank Silvera from the Magnificent Seven film franchise. Contreras played a villager in The Magnificent Seven, while Silvera was libero in Guns of the Magnificent Seven. These experienced actors smoothly moved from the big screen to the small screen, leaving a lasting impression on the Western genre. Even though The High Chaparral ended in 1971, its influence lingered. In the 1973 Gunsmoke episode titled Matt's Love Story, the Cannon Ranch made a cameo. A visual treat for fans, the recognizable shots of the Cannon House and Ranch provided a nostalgic nod to the show that had left a lasting impression on television. So, as you dive into the tales of the Cannon and Montoya families, remember the subtle connections and presence of The High Chaparral. There's more to this classic than meets the eye, and its influence extends beyond its initial airings, leaving a lasting impression on television westerns. David Rose, the composer of the iconic theme song for The High Chaparral, adapted it from his score for the Bonanza Season 5 episode titled The Pressure Game. This crossover of musical elements added a familiar touch for viewers already acquainted with Rose's work in the western genre. Bob Hoy, portraying Don Collier's younger brother in the series, interestingly, was one year older than Don Collier himself. This casting choice, albeit unconventional, didn't diminish the chemistry between the two actors, contributing to the dynamic portrayal of the Collier brothers on screen. The title of the series, The High Chaparral, draws its inspiration from the Californian and Baja California landscapes. A chaparral refers to an area with evergreen shrubland, specifically in California and the north of the Baja California Peninsula, Mexico. The term chaparro in Spanish denotes an evergreen oak shrubland, and it also describes a bush found in Central America and Venezuela within the Malpighiesi family. 
As viewers immerse themselves in the rugged world of the High Chaparral, it's worth noting the geographical significance of the title, reflecting the untamed landscapes where the characters navigate their lives. The show's setting mirrors the resilience and adaptability of the characters against the backdrop of the diverse Chaparral regions. These lesser-known facets of the High Chaparral, from its musical roots to the age dynamic in the cast, and the geographical inspiration behind its title, add layers of intrigue to the series. The integration of diverse elements enhances the viewer's experience, making the High Chaparral a unique and nuanced addition to the Western television genre. The filming of the High Chaparral took place at Paramount Pictures Studios, adding a touch of Hollywood history to this old West drama. Created by David Dortord of Bonanza fame, the series stands out for its robust portrayals of Native Americans and non-condescending depictions of life among Mexican neighbors. Interestingly, the assistant director for certain episodes was the son of the legendary actor-director Erich von Stroheim, infusing a layer of Hollywood heritage into the show. This connection to cinema royalty adds an interesting dimension to the behind-the-scenes dynamics. The series, which concluded in 1971, continues to leave its mark. In a 1973 Gunsmoke episode titled Matt's Love Story, the Cannon Ranch made a cameo appearance, offering a visual treat for fans and a nostalgic nod to the lasting influence of the show on television westerns. Composer David Rose, known for creating the theme song, adapted it from his score for a Bonanza episode. This blending of musical elements adds a familiar touch for viewers acquainted with Rose's work in the Western genre. Another interesting fact involves Bob Hoy, who portrayed Don Collier's younger brother in the series despite being one year older than Collier himself. This unconventional casting choice didn't diminish the on-screen chemistry between the Collier brothers. The title of the show, inspired by the Californian and Baja California landscapes, refers to an area with evergreen shrubland, reflecting the untamed environments where the characters navigate their lives. The geographical significance of the title mirrors the resilience and adaptability of the characters against the backdrop of diverse chaparral regions. As viewers immerse themselves in the rugged world of the show, these lesser-known facets, from Hollywood connections to musical roots and geographical inspirations, add layers of depth to the series. The integration of diverse elements enhances the viewer's experience, making the High Chaparral a unique and nuanced addition to the Western television genre. Amidst the vast expanse of the High Chaparral, an unexpected and somber incident occurred during the filming of a particularly intense scene. It led to the injury of one of the main actors, casting a shadow over the set. The resilient spirit of the production prevailed, but the memory of that fateful day remains a poignant reminder of the challenges faced in bringing this gripping series to life. As we delve into the intricacies of the show, its geographical roots take center stage. The Californian and Baja California landscapes inspiring the series title hold more significance than meets the eye. These chaparrals serve as a metaphorical backdrop to the characters' lives, mirroring their resilience and adaptability in the face of adversity. The untamed environments become not just a setting but a character in its own right, shaping the narratives that unfold within the rugged world of the show. Beyond the on-screen drama, the series continues to exert influence even after the final curtain fell in 1971. In an unexpected crossover, the Cannon Ranch made a cameo appearance in a 1973 Gunsmoke episode, nodding to the lasting influence the High Chaparral had on the television western genre. This connection adds a layer of interest for fans and reinforces the unique impact of the show. Unveiling the layers of the High Chaparral, another noteworthy detail emerges from the musical essence of the series. David Rose, known for composing the theme song, seamlessly integrated musical elements from his previous work on Bonanza. This subtle nod to his own repertoire provides a familiar touch for viewers acquainted with Rose's Western genre work, enhancing the auditory experience of the series. In the dynamic casting landscape, an unconventional choice adds an interesting dynamic to the Collier brothers. Bob Hoy, portraying Don Collier's younger brother, defied conventional age norms by being a year older than Collier himself. This casting decision, though unconventional, did not detract from the chemistry between the two actors, contributing to the dynamic portrayal of the Collier brothers on screen. Concluding this exploration into the depths of the High Chaparral, the layers of its narrative, geographical roots, unexpected crossovers, and musical nuances come together to form a unique addition to the Western television genre. The untamed landscapes of the Old West, both on and off the screen, serve as a testament to the show's resilience and influence.